Stephanie is a nine-year-old little girl who for some reason has been abandoned by her parents. She lives in her house all alone and just about takes care of herself. Her only friend is a soft turtle toy whom she calls Francis. A normal day for Stephanie consists of watching cartoons, playing the piano, preparing smoothies for herself and spending time with Francis the turtle. One day, when Stephanie turns on the television, the news channels broadcast the miserable situation of the world where some supernatural forces are wreaking havoc in different countries. They also mention that a strict quarantine has been declared and people are asked to stay inside their homes. However, Stephanie does not pay attention to such matters and simply changes to her cartoon channel. Being a nine-year-old, she is clumsy at everything she does and often makes a mess of the house. However, she is still content and happy to live alone without her parents. The same day, as Stephanie is preparing a smoothie in the kitchen, she hears a sudden noise coming from upstairs. Scared, the little girl rushes there, only to find a ball dropping as if someone is inviting her to play. Without knowing who the person is, Stephanie yells at him or her and returns to the kitchen. Unfortunately, there, she steps on a broken piece of glass, which causes her to scream in pain. But as there is no one to look after her, she quickly regroups and limps upstairs, where she grabs a first aid kit and tends to her wound. Later at night, Stephanie prepares dinner and serves it on plates for four people in the family, two for her parents and the other two for her brother and herself. None for Francis. That's just not right. She then brushes her teeth and sleeps after reading a tale to her doll, Francis. The next morning, Stephanie places Francis on the floor and urges him to play hide and seek. She then goes straight to a room and hides inside a makeshift tent. There, while she is looking at a family photo album, Stephanie hears a dangerous creature sound coming from outside the house. Terrified, she closes her mouth and tries her best to remain quiet. The monster hurls near Stephanie, but leaves when it doesn't see anyone. After a while, Stephanie slowly comes out of her tent and approaches the the window to take a look at the creature. Sadly, she sees no one and deduces that the creature has escaped into the nearby woods. She then tells Francis that the monster doesn't like noises, so they should remain silent. In the afternoon, as Stephanie is playing football with Francis, she notices her pet rabbit, Mr. Hopper, wandering around the garden. Turns out that he has somehow managed to get out of his cage. Stephanie asks Mr. Hopper to wait for a while and rushes to the kitchen to prepare some food for him. After some time, she comes back with a bowl full of tomato sauce. She then tries to lure Mr. Mr. Hopper back inside, but fails as the rabbit hops towards the woods. Dickhead rabbit don't deserve my tomato sauce anyway. Afterward, when Stephanie is brushing her teeth at night, the electricity suddenly cuts off, making her scared. She then rushes to her brother Paul's room and holds his hand. Strangely, the hand looks pale and weak, as if he is already dead. But when Stephanie urges Paul to protect her, his hand slowly moves, implying that a supernatural force is controlling him now. At night, she hears a loud bang by the window, which scares the life out of her. Slowly and warily, she goes to check and finds blood all over the place. The little girl follows the trail and finds her pet rabbit, Mr. Hopper, badly injured and bleeding on the table. Enraged, she enters Paul's room and blames him for the rabbit's death and the departure of their parents. She then picks up a baseball bat and starts bashing his body, which is lying on the bed. Because of this, the cloth covering Paul's head slips, which reveals his decomposed face. The following night, it is raining and the power again cuts off. Steph Stephanie goes to the basement to get some candles, and while there, she notices the washing machine shaking violently, like someone is trapped inside. Afraid, she runs straight to her makeshift tent and sleeps. Late at night, Stephanie hears someone opening the door. She walks downstairs to check it and sees water everywhere on the floor. She assumes that someone has managed to sneak inside the house. When lightning occurs, one can clearly see that someone is standing behind her back. I don't think I've ever described a jump scare like that before. Frightened, Stephanie goes to the bathroom and locks herself inside. The footsteps start approaching her, making her close her mouth in horror. But to her surprise, it's her parents, Eric and Jane, who have returned to visit her. After all this, the little girl reunites with her parents and sleeps with them. The next day, Jane changes her dress in front of Stephanie, assuming that she is sleeping. However, she is wrong. The little girl is awake and she stares at her mother from behind. Strangely, there are some dot-like scars on her mother's belly, which frightens Stephanie. Later, she notices her father carrying wooden blocks, trying to to prepare a fence around the house. He claims that he is doing this to protect the house from the monster. Seeing this, Stephanie rushes to her brother's room, but does not find his corpse there. Without notifying anyone, she then walks into the woods in search of her brother. But to her dismay, she finds that her parents have already buried Paul near the backyard. Angry, the little girl frantically tries to dig out the body with her hands, but at the same time, she is called by her parents. When Stephanie returns home, her mother Jane urges her to never step out of the fence without their permission. The little girl obliges 
but expresses her desire to have Paul back in the house. The next morning, while having pancakes for breakfast, Stephanie asks her mom why she left her alone in the house. Jane replies that it was not her choice because they had assumed that Stephanie was also captured by the monster. Hearing this, the little girl tells her mother that the monster lives in the woods and will attack them whenever there is chaos or noise inside the house. She also mentions that one should remain silent and calm when the monster enters the house. Later at night, the dead body of Paul is brought back to the house through the window by an unseen force. Both the parents are sad to see this as they had just buried him with heavy hearts. However, Stephanie reacts normally as if nothing had happened. During dinner, she asks Eric if the monster brought her brother back and Eric confirms it. He also tells Stephanie that the monster is after her and will follow them wherever they go. In the next scene, Stephanie secretly enters her mother's room and finds numerous newspaper articles posted on a board, including little children like her committing heinous crimes. She goes through a book kept on the table and gets to know that Jane is actually trying to study brain surgery and its procedures. While she is looking through other posters, Jane rushes into the room, causing Stephanie to hide under the table. Jane looks worried and when she looks at the brain pictures, she loses her temper and throws them away. Afterward, Stephanie can be seen chilling in the bathtub when Eric approaches her. He tells her that the monster is not an external force, but only the result of her bad feelings. Hence, she needs to control herself and try not to let the negative feelings take over her. Stephanie politely agrees, but in return, asks her father why she was left alone. This makes Eric emotional, and he slowly whispers that he was afraid and had no idea what to do to save his family. At night, Stephanie walks downstairs and hears her parents discussing ways to keep her under control. Eric seems positive, believing that Stephanie can control her emotions, while Jane thinks otherwise. She suggests that they perform a brain procedure, but Eric opposes it, stating that it has high risks. He also continuously mentions that he doesn't want to lose his daughter. Stephanie, who is hearing all of this, doesn't say a word and simply returns to her room to sleep. In her dream, she hears a strange sound coming from the other side of the entrance door. Slowly, she walks towards it and notices that it is already open. Suddenly, when she approaches the door, it closes, making her terrified. Despite this, she slowly opens it again and finds her father's ghost on the other side. With this, she starts screaming and eventually wakes up from her nightmare. However, Stephanie is still not convinced that it was only her imagination. Hence, she goes downstairs and stands in front of the same door. But just then, her parents arrive and comfort her. Stephanie tells Eric that she saw the monster killing him in her dream. And as soon as she says this, the entrance door opens all of a sudden and an unseen paranormal force drags Eric out. Seeing this, Jane carries Stephanie and takes her to a hiding place inside a closet. Stephanie asks her mother to remain calm and silent so that the monster won't hear them and return. After a while, everything goes silent and Jane steps out of the closet to check around. When she notices nothing, she confirms to the little girl that everything is under control. But unfortunately, when she asks Stephanie to accompany her, she is pulled by the same unseen force. Frightened, Stephanie runs to her room, grabs Francis, and jumps from the window. She injures herself in the process, but gets right back up and tries to climb a ladder and back to the house. Eric and Jane try to stop her, but to no avail, as the unseen force, which seems to be originating from the little girl herself, keeps dragging them back. Fortunately, Jane uses the last of her strength and pulls Stephanie down from the ladder. But their troubles are far from over. As the parents lie on the ground, a strange creature with tentacles tries to attack them from all sides. Jane orders her daughter to stop, but the little girl is so afraid that she doesn't comply. But before any damage is caused, Jane whips out a chloroformed handkerchief and puts it against Steph's face, hence putting her to sleep. Now, with the creature silenced, she tells Stephanie, you are the monster. The next day, Stephanie wakes up and apologizes to her parents for running out of the house without their permission. Eric comforts her and reveals that she has a monster inside her that is controlling her activities and her mind. Comforting indeed. With the help of some pendulum balls, he then tries to hypnotize Stephanie and asks her about what she did to Paul. The little girl closes her eyes and reveals that while she and Paul were carving pumpkins for Halloween, he started teasing her. This is why she attacked him with all her arms, i.e. tentacles. Saying this much, she again starts becoming violent, but Jane calms her down with a vaccine. Following this, the parents take Stephanie to an operation room, and Jane proceeds to cut her head open. Eric tries to stop his wife from doing so, but she mentions that it is the only way to keep her alive and safe. It turns out that she wants to remove the monster by conducting a brain surgery. Unfortunately, just before the procedure can begin, the possessed little girl regains her consciousness and destroys the whole lab with her powers. In the next scene, Eric is watching the news, which mentions that the medical procedure conducted worldwide to treat children like Stephanie has gone wrong, and a large number of doctors and other medical 
personnel have been killed in the process. In the news, it is also mentioned that the medical procedure was the last hope to find a cure. Now that it has failed, the only remaining option is to euthanize the children suffering from this rare condition. In the morning, Stephanie acts as if nothing has happened. On the other hand, the parents plot to kill their daughter by poisoning her hot chocolate. Eric then asks Stephanie to accompany him for a walk in the woods. While the father-daughter duo bonds outside, Stephanie apologizes to her father for hurting him. Eric is moved by the comments, but after a short pause, he asks his daughter to drink the hot chocolate. But right before she can drink it, her telekinesis powers throw the sipper away and her face starts to turn blue. She tries to control herself but fails, compelling Eric to reach out for his gun and shoot her multiple times. After the incident, a distraught Eric returns home, believing that Stephanie has died. He cries profusely and expresses his guilt for what he has done. However, the next day, when he proceeds to bury Stephanie's body, he finds her standing at the back door of the fence. A dumbfounded Eric tries to react, but Stephanie gives him no chance and throws him in the air with her telekinesis power. She then heads towards the bathroom to find Jane and brings her downstairs, mercilessly striking her on the walls. Following this, she stabs Eric with a knife and breaks Jane's bones, killing them instantly and telling them that they should have never returned. In the last scene, she destroys the whole house with her telekinesis powers, drags her parents' bodies outdoors, and abandons them at Paul's grave. She also destroys the other properties in the neighborhood after dropping and stepping on her toy turtle, allegedly to demonstrate that she has been taken over by the Force. It appears as though her shadow has now extended tentacles like a giant octopus. The movie ends as we are given an aerial shot of the entire Earth, which has been completely ravaged by deadly fires. This indicates that several other telekinetic children are alive and kicking. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.